did you know that stopping down will affect your image quality? It will get worse. And in this video, I'm testing my lenses and see how much and does it really matter. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visioner and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And let's get right into the business. Stopping down too much will make diffraction visible. In short, what it means is that the light bends a bit when hitting the edge of the aperture blade. That causes a light ray from exactly the same spot in the subject to land in a bit different place in your sensor. And that will make the image quality worse. The smaller the aperture is, the more light bends. This is just a simple way of uh, showing what it actually means. When you have a big aperture, the spot of the light in your sensor has more uh, uh, sharp edges. And when the light starts bending, you stop down and the diffraction gets uh, more and more. The edges of a spot in the sensor will have a feathered edge and that will cause some unsharpness on your images. Just for fun, I decided to test when the diffraction starts to kick in in my lenses. I took several of my lenses that I happen to have right now and tested them with different apertures and see how much the image uh, quality will get worse. The reason that I'm making this video is that it's been asked for me many, many times how, how much the diffraction does affect your image quality and how far I can stop down without losing the image quality. And it was also a discussion in my latest live stream with Matt Suez when somebody asked if it's uh, more uh, wise to um, focus bracket in your landscape shots and use the best possible aperture in your lens so that you will, uh, with the focus bracketing, to get more depth of field if you don't want to stop down that much. So that's why I'm testing it uh, in this video. The lenses that I tested are... I will mainly talk about the 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8 pro zoom lens, but I will show results with the other lenses too. My set was really simple by, and by no means it was not very scientific. But the setup was good enough for me to see the results. What I photographed was this backgammon board game box, which has these handmade wooden patterns, which are really, really good for testing uh, how sharp the image is. And there are also some scratches on the, on the surface of, so, so we can see really if the scratch is uh, uh, tack sharp or not. For lighting, I had a big LED panel so that the light is as even as possible, so there won't be any uh, big shadows. And also I had it from the side a bit because this uh, surface is uh, quite uh, shiny. And if I had the uh, light coming straight from the camera, there would have been a lot of reflections on the surface of the backgammon box. And I also had the camera EM1 Mark II on a tripod and used the anti-shock shutter mode and two second self timer. This way I avoided or made sure that there are no vibrations and no camera shake when I was taking these images so that the images are as sharp as possible. Let's start with the sharpness in general. All these lenses were at its best when stopped down two thirds of a stop. And that was no surprise. I actually knew that already from my experience when I have been shooting with this, with this gear for many, many years. But there was one significant difference. Pro lenses were really, really sharp, full open, with the fastest aperture. The difference between the best aperture is really, really tiny. So you could use the, uh, the fastest aperture on your pro lenses with no problem. But with the Mzuiko lineup lenses, which are not the pro versions, you need to stop that two thirds of a stop to get the best results. The, the difference is a lot, lot bigger. So there is a small difference in that, but by no means the Mzuiko lenses are bad, you can use them because this is only a laboratory test and has very little to do with the real world photography. But I will talk about that in the later part of the video. What are the actual results and what they mean? But we'll get back to those. But there was one exception. The 12mm f2.0 lens, which is not considered to be a pro lens, 
is actually a pro-grade lens because you can use the f2.0 no problem at all. The difference between the sharpness of the fastest aperture and stopping down two-thirds is as small as it is with the pro lenses. So that is actually a good lens. And the great thing is that it's one of the first or not one of the first, but actually the first prime lens for Micro Four Thirds World from Olympus. So they did a very good job about 10, 12, it's about 10 year old lens at least. All right, but let's talk about when the diffraction starts to affect the image quality in the lenses that I tested in this situation that I tested them. As I said, my example is the 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8 lens and I will use the 25 millimeter focal length as an example, as a main example. But as I said, I will show you pictures with the other lenses too. Well, in real life, diffraction starts to kick in as soon as you start stopping down. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be stopping down your lenses, of course not. But the first aperture that is really, really visible that it might be a concern is f16 and then f 22, there you can see it real well. This doesn't mean that these apertures are not usable. Of course they are, but remember that the image quality isn't at its best. But then yet again, you will have a lot more depth of field and most likely the image will look sharper than let's say that like f4 because of the uh, greater depth of field. But the actual sharpness of the image is a bit less. But uh, to be honest, in many cases, it doesn't really matter. Some of the diffractions and most of it you can get rid of with uh, image sharpening. So actually it's not a really that big deal, but it's a good to know if, if you are one of those that really want your images to be really, really sharp. And nothing wrong with that. I also like sharp images. And here are the images from other lenses that I tested. Alright, and then my conclusion. Here are my suggestions for different lenses that I tested on this particular test, which gave the best result or which ap aperture values gave the best result. So if you want to maximize your image quality, use the aperture values that I show here for each lens. And then remember, sharpness is only one small part of photography. There are lots and lots of other things that matter a lot more. You have the subject, you have the view, the point of view that you're uh, trying to make with the photograph. And then there is a story, which I think is the most important thing in photography. Your images need to have a story. Without a story, image is just plain surface. And if your image has a great story, Nobody cares about the sharpness. This test is only to see how sharp the lenses are and what apertures to use to get the sharpest results. If that is something that you really feel important and you have all the other aspects like the story, your point of view, your composition are perfect, then you start, then you need to start thinking about the sharpness. But anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. I, for me, it was actually quite fun to do because I've never done this before. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.